is there's an organizational strategy behind this notion of, of iron law of oligarchy. Now, that's not something that I coined. It was a, a political scientist by the name of Robert Michels, M-I-C-H-E-L-S. It sounds French, Robert Michels. I think he was born in Italy, but his academic career was in Germany. And uh, three thinkers, and there is a, some space for authentic academic scholarly work. I'm not going to bore people with, with the nerd aspects of it, but Michels is one of the important thinkers. The other one is uh, Gaetano Mosca, and the other one is Vilfredo Pareto, right? He's a, he was Italian. So these guys between them were trying to figure out, hey, how come if we've destroyed all the monarchies and we got rid of the church and we have something like social democracy or socialism or democracy, liberalism, all the iterations of non-monarchical, non-Vatican, non-hereditary leadership uh, oligarchy, how come we're still being oppressed by a tiny minority, right? And that question is as pertinent today in 2022 as it was in the early 20th century with the rise of fascism and the, the great wars, numbers one and two, that, that really try to address this question. And we think, we, myself included, uh, not that I was fully taken in by it, we think that all we have to do is support the great man on the white horse with uh, orange hair, perhaps, and used to be a reality television star <laughs> and a fame whore on all the talk shows, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Um, that everything's going to be cool after that. So we're falling uh, again for this tra trap. It's like it's like a washing machine, right? Spin, rinse, repeat over. We we. So I want to break that cycle.